Why did he do that? Why would you do that? Well, I think it's a complicated answer. And one of the things has to do with the rising water table in Egypt. Everyone may be familiar with this. You saw from Petrie's time, the water down in the, in the antechamber, to today being you know, close to the entrance of that pyramid. It's risen several meters. This is footage I took from the bottom of what's called the Osiris shaft at the Giza Plateau. So halfway down the causeway, there's, a, there's, a, there's three different chambers, goes down about 150 feet. You've got to descend down these crazy ladders. And the very bottom chamber, and there's actually a big granite box in this chamber. You go down a ladder, there's a little patchy bit of mud that you stand on, and you can kind of look down and you can see, but that water table's risen up and there's actually a big chamber with a box and then there's tunnels running off from that that have never been explored. You know, Trevor Grass is here, he probably knows something about those. Um, they've never been explored, but that water table's been rising. So why has the water table been rising? What's, what's going on? Well, one of the reasons for the water table rising is there's been the construction of, the, of what's called the, um, you know, the, the Aswan Dam. It's the, the big dam in Aswan. So there was a dam made by the British around the turn of the uh, 20th century. And in the 1960s, the Soviets worked with Egypt to build just the, the, the great Aswan Dam, the, the big dam uh, on the Nile in Egypt. And you can see here on the map, they actually, when they built this dam, they created what is the world's largest man-made lake, Lake Nasser. It's massive. If, if you've seen Abu Simbel, they had to move Abu Simbel up. This also connects to the Vase research because this flooded Toshka and all of these sites in the north, north of Sudan and southern Egypt where they found a lot of these very old vases and burials. That's why all we've got to go on are these photos from, like, again, the turn of the 20th century. And what this did was it stopped the annual inundation on the Nile. So when they put this in there, now no longer does the Nile flood. And it sounds a little counterintuitive. You're like, well, how come the water table's rising then? Well, not only does it stop the Nile from flooding for three months of the year, what it, the impact it's having is it's stopping the nine-month dry season. Right? So for the rest of the nine months, there's less water in the Nile, meaning the groundwater doesn't rise as high or it's not rising at the same rate. But since the 1960s, that groundwater has been slowly rising. And you've got guys like Zay, they've been investigating under the Sphinx to say, well, where's the water table at? It's a concern for a lot of these sites. And it's certainly a concern at Hawara. Is this a case of the truth being suppressed? Certainly that's what's happened. Or is this more of a political expediency thing? I actually think the, the, the answer lays somewhere in between. I think it's a, mostly a political response